really want to drive any time. Yeah. The clock's way off. So you're performing like. Okay, why don't we go ahead and call tonight's work session to order? Uh, will be the Community Enhancement Program Review. Mr. Sutton. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for having me here tonight. Um, so in September, Council asked staff to take a look at reviewing the Community Enhancement Program. And so this report is really just to kind of bring back information on what we found and solicit some input from Council in a couple of different areas. Uh, from what we found, the CP has been in existence for about 20 years, at least 20 years. Um, that's as far back as I could find. And it's currently funded by $30,000 a year, which has been the case since 2006. Um, so that, that will be one area to talk about. Um, before, after review of the program, um, we found four areas that we think there could be some revisions needed. Uh, that would be under program funding, grant awards, grant application changes, and accountability and reporting. So in terms of program funding, as I mentioned, the CEP has not had an update to its uh, budget allocation in what, 15 or 16 years. And inflation has um, increased by about total 30%. Be on par in terms of buying power and then in terms of efficacy of the program and for what this program can do for the community um, we think that there could be some room for improvement in that area uh, if we were to increase funds to keep pace with inflation we'd be looking at about a nine thousand dollar increase with the current funding uh, that being said uh, cities that are similarly sized um, and similar to us do fund their programs at about ten to fifty thousand dollars depending uh, the caveat being that a lot of those cities do get funding from Metro for that. Um, in the area of um, grant amounts, um, obviously, if we were to increase the amount of funding available, it might be necessary to figure out how to allocate the funding differently. Make sure that the program is as effective as possible um, to carry out the goals of council, however that be. So every year, there's a funding gap between what people ask for, what what uh, groups ask for, and what is in the program. So, but currently, the program does get pretty close to full allocation every year. And that's a pretty good indicator that um, the program is being effective. If the budget was to go up, though, there might need to be a change. Um, two ways to do that would be to increase the number of grantees funded, which might not be feasible every year, depending on the amount of um, applicants or the specific programs that are asking for money. The other way would be to increase the funding limit to make sure that those funds are distributed fully and so that the program is as effective as possible. The third area that we want to talk about briefly would be the grant application itself. So if you've reviewed the application, um, you probably found that there are some things that are included in there in the packet that say they're included that are not included. Uh, the application is frankly a little bit outdated um, and could use some changes in various areas to bring it up to kind of current contextual standards. Um, Along with that, and probably the biggest opportunity, and this ties into the fourth area I want to talk about, is the reporting requirements. So currently, uh, people who are funded, organizations who are funded, are required to report back, but it's a very limited report. We don't necessarily ask for receipts in there, but we do ask that they basically say, if you used the funds in this manner, this is what we did. Uh, there's no accountability. If they don't report back, they can still come back next year and ask for more grant funding. <clears throat> and so, one of the things that we are um, seeing in other grant programs is that one, there is a form given to report back asking for key things like have you spent the money, where did you spend it, how did that align with your budget, what was your, um, what were the outcomes of your of your program, what were the outputs of your program, how did you achieve the goals, and then also the accountability in terms of the actual costs. Um, so that could be a fairly simple change. And we would recommend that, um, and it is inconsistent with other grant programs, is that if people don't be reporting, typically they don't qualify for future rounds of funding. Um, that pretty much wraps up the findings in brief. Um, and so tonight, I'm really here to answer questions and to get input in those uh, four areas about how council might like to see those things changed. Um, so I guess if anybody has questions, answer. I just thought it looked real good what you did. Uh, I think they all made sense to me. I, the only concern I had a little bit was the application form itself. And it's I mean, maybe we could consolidate that. We don't want people to think they have to fill in all the lines, I think. 
Yeah, and that's some of it too, is it does look intimidating. And and some of the information that we we're asking for seems um, either too much or too little. Um, and, and that's why I'd attach the Forest Grove one is because they do ask some very targeted questions that elicit shorter answers and more data at the same time. Um, yeah, I thought what you, what you had there looked good to me. Uh, yeah, Isaac, uh, I, I agree. It, uh, uh, I thought you did a nice thorough job of this. And uh, the, the the one caveat that uh, that you single out yourself is that, you know, the, the uh, accountability. And so, uh, well, yeah, so I like to step back, and I, I think making it, uh, jumping it up to $39,000 to reflect inflation, that makes sense. Uh, but the accountability, um, and uh, what I would like to see is, you know, once a project has, has come to fruition, they have, a, have an appropriate report, that's when the single disbursement is done. So make the paperwork as you know as minimum as possible on the city staff. Uh, so one, one single uh, reporting period, and then one single disbursement at the end of the at the end of the project. So I like what you like what you did and suggested an option there. Thank you. So I like what you did. Um, I'm a little concerned about the end of the reporting for some of the asks. Some of the asks are asking because they need the money up front. You know, I don't think the holiday feather bazaar could do it. Getting the money on the back end. Usually the runs need upfront money and they're using that as the seed money to get it going having done events and requested and first for this i know that there are events that do that but when it's either way they should account for it and have a report back to the city of some format and i know that the application we currently use is basically was designed after the forest grove one as mike bought current format over from um forest grove I agree with increasing it. It's been 3,000 as long as I can remember. In fact, I I remember the fight when it was going to be zero, and we took timber cut money and put it in there. So, yeah, I, and I would add too. I think the concern, um, you know, on our part was that exactly what you said, Mayor, that um, if the funding wasn't available up front, some of these smaller programs would really be challenged to do the projects if they were relying on a reimbursement type of grant. And that's why we had discussed, um, you know, that there would be a requirement to come back and actually present on the project you completed. And that would be the mechanism to continue being eligible for the grant program moving forward. So, you know, if in yeah, fact you didn't demonstrate that you used the money as, you know, as you said, then. It could right. be as simple as here's all my revenues from this event. Right. Including the, our amount. And here's how they were spent showing that, okay, Correct. there was the need there. It wasn't. Yes. You know, but we didn't want it to discourage anybody from applying because yeah. you know they needed the funds first right. to do the project. And that's what we were kind of trying to balance with some some level of accountability, but also making sure that the funds were there up front if that was needed to actually complete the project. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think that's a really good point. And Mayor, uh, you know, there are, are uh, projects that do need the upfront funding. Right. Um, that, and that was, but, but if they don't fulfill the accountability yes. agreements, then, then next year they're not eligible. Sorry, yeah, right. you're right. Then there may, you know, and just, yeah. you could say, you know, you're not eligible for this year, and then they can come back the year after. You know, that, that's completely up to you. It's just, yes, we we wanted to build in some level of accountability without discouraging people from participating. And the the number of groups has grown too, and I think that's kind of why you see some of the numbers go down as for requested and what was given out because. We're allocating funds on a you know certain basis, and mm -hmm. the concept on that was always that if four council members didn't put funds to a project, then it didn't have the support of the council. Right. The question I always had though is, then we just not disperse those funds, or how, I mean, I always thought that we should come back around. I do almost like a second round. Well, not a second round, but then say, okay, here's. Here's the groups that got council support, and here's the leftover mm -hmm. monies, and these council members now reallocated into the different groups they've already done. That way, you know, it doesn't come out 26. Maybe mm -hmm. they wanted that, but it didn't get the council support, so they'd rather put it to this other program. Sure. That's what I mean by circling okay. it back. Yeah. So that well, and and like I said, I mean this is 
this is just a work session to get your initial thoughts. Um, there's lots of time to continue, you know, chatting about this. We just wanted to make sure it got in front of you before we started the new budget cycle so that if there were changes in funding, we could adjust that. And then also, as you're rolling into your goal setting, you know, if it's something you want us to devote, to devote some more time to, too, we can put it on the goal list. Um, so, you know, we're just really looking for any feedback um, on what you want us to bring back. So, <clears throat> My first recommendation, I put it to all, is uh, I like round numbers. So I would say increase the amount to actually 40000 uh, to account for future inflation as mm -hmm. well, because we're not going to review this every year. So right. let's give ourselves a, well, a buffer. Let's pop it up to 50 now. Okay. I'm not, uh, no, let's take one step at a time. <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, hopefully that gets under control. Um, <laughs> I'd also like to ask Isaac, did you think about a preference point for uh, organizations that applied from not being funded in the previous grant cycle? And so that we get different, maybe new opportunities to fund different projects every year over year. Yeah, and that's certainly something we can include. Um, I'm sure you've seen the, most of you probably voted on multiple rounds. And so you're seeing the same probably nine to 10 out of the 14 back every year. And that's, that's okay. Some of those programs I'm sure need the support, but there are places that don't get funded or things that don't get funded. And I, I don't know how to incorporate a preference point. Uh, I can look at how we present the information to council when we get an application, um, but we can certainly call that out um, in the application. Or maybe setting that as a, a seed in reminding councils in the future of who received previously versus who had not received in the grant applicant pool. Um, I would also echo the, the sentiments of right-sizing the application and the reporting request. Uh, I think we have to be inclusive in, in drafting those that we're, we're thinking about staffing and uh, uh, leadership structure of some of the organizations that we're, we're providing funds to and what their bandwidth would be. Um, I would say yes, please, more accountability in, in reporting on the impact of the funding and how we're supporting that community. Um, we don't want this to be so uh, coming across as being intrusive or something along those lines, but I think that we want to be accountable to the community and saying these dollars are being utilized for positive impact. So um, those are my recommendations. I do appreciate staff for taking the time. I would love to continue this conversation because I think it is long overdue so thank you and i'd point out too that you know yes we do see a lot of the same organizations that come back and apply for these funds and i would say part of that i'm sure is actually kind of by design of the program right because you're looking for people you know part of the qualification is that it's a program that's benefiting scap so you're only really gonna have so many organizations that really fit that bill and so of course you know we want to do our best to keep that scap centric but i also want to make sure that you know, if there are other organizations out there that are doing good things in Scapoose and haven't received funding in the past that we try to make, you know, try to get those people through the door as well. So I appreciate you actually bringing that up, uh, city manager, uh, because I do see that we get a variety of applicants from outside of Scapoose city limits, which I understand. I mean, we're, we're impacting the community at large, right? Not just within city limits. And so um, I think acknowledging that we want to have the most impact for those that are within our community Sometimes, you know, we, we see a name or something and we forget actually they might be housed outside of that, in that area. And I, and I think the thought is that even if they are located outside of the city, if they're doing good work here in the community, that, you know, we want to be able to support those efforts that they're doing here in the city. So that, I think that's been the focus is less where they are located and more that the project they are doing is here in the city. Absolutely. Thank you. I have a clarifying question. Has it been in the past that if not four of us have have marked down a dollar amount on something that they receive zero? Did I recall? That was supposed I mean, to, that was the, that was when Mike first came on board was. Okay. Uh, so, it, and there were some times when there were some that did happen. I think you find um, previous to that, we haggled it out the old fashioned way. Arm wrestle. But see, we don't have, that's not clear to me because we don't come back and have conversations or say after these people left, I'm not giving them any money or I am like we individually turn in our paperwork. And right. so there isn't like a collective. Right. So, right. So right now you all aren't, you know, you're not collectively making those decisions, no. right? You're each, you each have your worksheet, you allocate, you know, your share of the funding as you see fit essentially. And then that person gets whatever, you know, total from each of you is. Um, 
um, it, it, were you thinking you wanted to do like more of a collaborative approach? No, I'm just saying me? as it stands, because I'm hearing in part of the conversation tonight that if we don't, if if poor don't. Right. Yeah, it, it's possible that someone could end up with no allocation. In the past, has it been like, so let's say the mayor gives somebody $50 and the rest of us gave them zero. Do you write them a check for $50? Exactly. No, that's not how it went. Is that, that's how it went. Yeah. No, if you didn't, if it didn't get four hours. If it didn't get four total votes. I think there was only one case of that. I don't, and I, honestly, yeah, I think there was over the years I've seen the program, I don't think I've ever seen it happen like that. Okay. Yeah, there was just one, one case. Okay. Yeah. And I think. I don't recall seeing anything like that. Yeah. It's not in the grant application information anyways. I think there needs to be yeah. clarification on this with this voting body and the people that are applying that if they don't receive at least four counselors allotting the money, then they won't get any. That, right. To me personally, that's not really clear. Yeah, yeah, I can clarify that. And then I'm in favor of rounding up to the 40,000 as Councilor Lasowski said, but um, I, I personally, if if we are saying majority vote, you know, for allocating money, then I don't want to limit how many applicants come before us. Um, so some years there's, you know, twelve. Maybe next year there's seventeen. Like I, I'd, I'd prefer to listen to them all. Um, I think the only reason you wouldn't get an application is simply if they didn't qualify for the parameters of the program. Otherwise, right. they're all going to come to you. Right. Um. So I'd like that to stay the same. And then and then just depending on how many are put in front of us, then that depends on how much we're allowed to give each one of them. But then so I feel like there needs to be a change in that evening. So I think that that evening needs to be like presentations and then we are allotting like on our own paper, but then instead of just giving it over or within two weeks, I think either at the end of that meeting or revisit it at the next meeting, but I don't know if that's like a public meeting or not, like where we hash. Scoring in public? Is that like. Well, like that we're verbally saying, I gave, did you give so-and-so this amount? No, I didn't give them. Okay, that's not the majority of us, zero dollars. Now the money for the rest of the groups has gone up because we're not giving it to. Oh, I see what you're saying, okay. Like you can't just turn in your paper without us having a convert, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because mm. then, as the mayor said, then or somebody had said, then you can give the groups you want more money. Oh right, if, if you're if taking, you understand that you're taking people off right, the table. The other, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we we need to like so under, understanding where everyone else is at, so that you can reallocate funds if there are more. So that night either that. needs to be two parts, or it's carried into two different meetings. I think two different meetings makes it easier. Yeah, I mean, I think that would probably make sense. Do all your because technically, next. those allocation sheets are public record. Sure, absolutely. That's actually how the majority of bodies who do this work is they do presentations separate from the allocating. So there's, I don't know, they don't all say how they do it. Some of them do it directly after, but that is how most of them do it. So they can have those discussions. I would prefer to have like the, the score sheet or the allocation sheet in front of us to just pencil in our thoughts and pencil in tentative amounts so that we each have some notes or. Oh, I agree. I think you know, I don't want to like more, then the next yeah. two weeks. I think it'd back. be much more helpful to be able to take notes and then while you're receiving the information, then come back to it. Whether she holds on to that until the next meeting or we hold on, you know. No, we can certainly hold on to that for you. Mayor. Uh, Isaac, I guess I would also like to, if you have any applications that weren't approved because they weren't filled out correctly or something. I guess I would like to know about that as well. Uh, and uh, because uh, uh, maybe they just said we're on the wrong track, but if if they, you'll, I assume that you'll, if they turn in something that's not quite correct, you'll call them and say, hey, you need to, this squared away, would you kind of thing? Okay. For sure. And I think that the, the qualifications are more to make sure that the programs are targeted at scouters. Okay. The other thing is so, sometimes we do get uh, applicants that, uh, or we seek, think are valid, but they actually backed out of it <laughs> like we did this last year because of COVID. So um, that would be the you know, the summer youth program that the uh, that the Quantas has sponsored. I have a 
Um, I have a clarifying question in the, I don't know if it's the current one or where it's listed. Um, I feel like I've read it before and this is why it's coming to me. Um, but only one or one nonprofit organization can ask for or can fill out this. The programs per yes. organization. Yeah, that is in there. So, so, so one thing that's kind of um, the last few years not settled well with me is technically the Feather Bazaar falls under the Scapu School District. So then, because they're not, the Feather Bazaar is not its own nonprofit. So then nobody else falling under the Scapu School District can right. present something to us. Mm. And that has been, I don't know, I don't want to say like, let's give an exception. Right. <laughs> but to me, um, you know, I know that there are other projects that other schools have wanted to do, but then they've been told, you know, and I'm not like, pointing out the Feather Bazaar, but that one just always gets in and it, but other, other projects aren't able to either turn it in or whatnot. And I, I don't know, I don't really sit well with that. So I just. Well, I mean, maybe we could do some kind of carve out that if it's a larger organization with different programs that maybe if it's, maybe it's based on the program and not the organization or something like that. I yeah. Mean, that could get around that. Because like parent groups are nonprofits, so that's why Grant Watts Parent Organization is its own nonprofit, and they could pitch an idea that helps that one elementary school. And so that was kind of the caveat, you know, like our way of making right. that happen. But I don't know. Well, I just I don't think there's anything bad about making the program more flexible so more people can apply. I mean, yeah, I don't think that's inherently a problem. And like I said, you know, yeah, maybe maybe the workaround is you target, you know, separate programs within, you know only one grant per program in an organization or something like that versus because know. technically I guess the library could come to us right mm -hmm. and they could have two different programs that they want to do and it's up to us to either fund both or say well mm -hmm. let's maybe the majority of us know and this one maybe you could say too um you know we're going to you know list which program you want the money to get first maybe you prioritize that one if you run out of funds the, the second program doesn't get it but if you end up in a situation where you have the money you go back and you fund both programs or something like that but you tell them you tell them to rank which program they want the money to have first you could do something like that but do we need to have that criteria i i i think it might just get in the way altogether you know Quantas might have several things that they're doing that would be valid and benefit mm -hmm. the community. And I think, I don't see why we need to have that restriction. Some programs have it and some don't. I don't, I didn't. I don't see why we need it. So yeah, just because they have it, I don't want to have it necessarily. I think it's probably just a mechanism to try to distribute the money to different, more organizations mm -hmm. over the program. But again, we're not, we're you, not you eliminating could... anybody. We're just, you know, all everybody's welcome to do it. Oh. Right. No, absolutely. Um, I think it's just it's just how you want to structure the program. It's just do you? I think typically what I found was the smaller the program, the more important it was to have that requirement to make sure that there was some kind of equitable fund dis distribution. But as programs grow, that requirement seems to drop off just by reading multiple grant applications. Well, probably right. for this very reason. Two good plans under. Right, and that's I agree with that. With that, but Pete's notion too is that you know if uh, if we have uh, five really cool, good programs that are going to serve the community to the better good, you know why wouldn't you fund them? Well, yeah, and I, and so, I think that's, which that's I would just take point. That's, I would just take that out entirely. Just take the one organization, just I, just line it out. We can, we can certainly do that. I mean, you could just say per program. Yeah, per program. Uh, we don't have the same program. Anything else? I feel like you have. I do. I do. I'm very and then, like and then we'll revisit this obviously before the application goes out. Yep, I think that the next round would probably be something more complete with the changes kind of highlighted and, and not as many documents. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, work session adjourned. Will we start our meeting at 7? Recess.